I'm going to show you how to create this with CSS Grid and a special code snippet by our very own Mark Harris that's going to help you to visualize the code that you need. And I'm telling you now, you got to sit and watch this because you're going to be blown away. Seriously, if you don't fall in love with this bit of code, I don't know what will help you out. Instead of using Flexbox, we're obviously going to be using the grid and it doesn't matter too much what I pick here because we're going to modify that with our columns and rows in a moment. Go to the layout tab and I'm going to make this be 600 wide and I'm also going to make it be 600 high. I'm only doing that so we can see it all on screen. Now at the moment, this is set to be two columns over one row. Let's change it to be a four by four like that. So we have four columns and four rows. You can see there, they are all perfect squares. Now the layout I'm gonna go for is I wanna have one container that fills up the bulk of it. I wanna have another container that goes down the side and I wanna have another container that goes across the bottom. Now, if you're very familiar with dropping containers in and using a bit of span to style it, you might not need this code snippet we're gonna show you, however, just watch what it does and how it helps you to visualize everything and basically how it's going to look. Start off with into our grid, I'm going to go and drop three containers. I now have container one, container two and container three. Even though you can see the starter container four, that is actually empty. I'm going to color all of these to make it easier for us to visualize. I think we're pretty okay there. Now let's go and see what the code snippet does. Hit the link in the video description, copy the code, make sure you're using the code snippets plugin that you can get for free. It is the number one plugin to use. Go and paste the code in, obviously give it a title, but literally just paste it in, save changes and activate. When you've done that, you will now notice an option down here called CSS Grid Helper. Hmm, I wonder what that is. Go into it and here's where the magic happens. This is literally your aid to help you define how those containers are going to look. First thing you want to do is put down the same number of rows and columns that you did on your page. So we went for a four by four. So obviously put in a four and a four. Then start to define your blocks. Now we have got three blocks because we've gone and dropped in three containers. If I had gone and put in five containers into here, you would obviously make sure that you do what I'm going to do five times. And believe me, when you follow it, it's really, really simple. Down here, we have a visualizer that gives us a preview of what we're building. And this is the magic of what this code does. I want my first block to go from column one to column three. And I want it to go from row one to row three. I want a nice big square. Normally when we're defining span, we start at the intersecting lines. So you would say one, two, three, four, five. It's where you have a line. But to make this really simple and easy, the code actually just calls them blocks. So row one, row two, row three, row four, column one, two, three, four. It makes it easier. So I want to go from C1 to C3 and R1 to R3. Sounds like a Star Wars robot, I know. But anyway, look, we're going to start at row one and we're going to end at row three. And I'm going to start at column one and I'm going to end at column three. I'm now hit generate block and it's now defined the code for us one to four. Now, if you're not used to CSS span, look, I know I've gone from column one to column three. So why has it got one to four? Well, one, two, three, four. It's the intersecting line. OK, but look what it's done. It's done the CSS for us and it's visualized it. Now let's go and add in another block. Remember, we've got three of them. Now let's work on block number two. I want this one to start at row one and I actually want it to end at row three. And I want it to start at column four and stay on column four. Right, so let's do this. We're going to go to one. We're going to go to three. We're going to start at column four and we're going to end at column four. Generate the block. Not only has it given us the code, which you can now see, but it's now given us a visualization of what we're going to see when we create it. Don't worry, it gets even simpler, right, when you go to apply it. Let's now do block set number three. I want to go from row four to row four and column one to column four. Easy peasy. So let's go with four to four and then one to four like that. Now we're going to generate the block and look at that. It's visualized it for us. How easy is that? Now there's two ways I can apply this. At the moment, it's just got the word selector in there. I could, if I want, copy all of this code, go back over, go to my grid, go to the advanced tab, go to custom CSS, paste it in. Nothing's going to happen. 
Then I'm going to change these items. I'm going to say dot C1, dot C2, dot C3. I know it's kind of like pretty simple, easy, right? Then I'm going to go to each of my containers and ensure that in the class bit, I've actually gone the same logic. C1, C2 for the second one, and for the third one, C3. And when I refresh the page, you can basically see what it's done. I have my layout, how it was defined over here. Now I did it by copying this over all into the grid. I could have just copied the individual code, gone over to my particular container, gone to the custom CSS and just dropped it in. So I don't have to give it a class name if I don't want, just leave it as selector if you so want. But I think it's a lot easier if you just go in and do this. And the reason why I'm saying it's easier is that if you suddenly want to switch it, so this now becomes a C3 and this one becomes C2, you just change the class name and they would swap over to be where they need to be. I've taken out the colors, dropped in images instead, and I can drop whatever I want onto it because, you know, these are just containers at the end of the day. So you want to add on a video or any other content, even a loop grid, you could do. But the focus of what I was trying to get across was that that bit of code gave you all of this. So if you were going to have seven containers, you would just go and add in another block set, another block set. And it gives you all of that code. But the bit I get so excited about is this. And if you want to change it, let's go for a 10 and a 10. Generate the block. Look at that. I mean, OK, now I'm going a little bit crazy, right? But a huge big thanks to Mark Harris for coming up with this genius bit of code. I'm Imran Web Squadron. See you soon. Never break, always fight, never quit. Do it right, play the game, win it life.